Hey, everybody. It's another Spits and Suds one-timer. I'm Gavin Spittle of 105.3 The Fan, joined by EP Rinkside. You can check up his uh, check out his sub stack at Shap Shots. It is D Magazine's Sean Shapiro. We wanted to come on real quick because the breaking news is Patrick Kane signing a one-year deal with the Detroit Red Wings. Sean, your thoughts? Yeah, and it's one of those where it will happen. Um, Kane is has picked Detroit. Detroit's picked Kane. It's kind of one of those weird spaces where. If you're listening to this right now, as we're recording this, it's still yet to be, the ink is yet to be dry. Um, From my understanding on it, it's kind of like a physical type. There's physicals have to be passed and things like that. But, uh, um, but yeah, it's uh, Patrick Kane, basically. It's, it's going to be about two points. I think it's like 2.75 million prorated for the rest of the year for Kane in Detroit and no he will uh it's an inter- it's an interesting move because we knew Kane Kane was coming up and everything and uh at the end of the day the whole talk of him wanting to sign with the contender and everything like that it was always going to have to be a team like Detroit or Buffalo to really for him to, to end up somewhere because the reality is, and we'll use Dallas as an example. Dallas would come up sometimes in the uh, as the as as teams people would be be talking about teams that Kane could sign with and bring up Dallas and, and everything like that. Dallas was never interested in Kane. Just truthfully, I've, I've having talked to people about it. Dallas was never really interested in Kane tr- in a in a in a in a real in a real serious manner because he's coming off a hip surgery. The stars know all too well how difficult it is to recover from. He wanted too much money and the stars are close to the cap. And that pretty much describes every contender. So for Kane to play in the NHL this year for a quote unquote contender, it would have taken so many hurdles to jump through and everything that it had to be a team like Detroit. Yep. According to cap friendly prior to the signing, Detroit has 4.332 million um, on the uh, cap. So, they had some space. I'm fascinated with Detroit, and I'm fascinated with Steve Eiserman because this is happening quick as far as, and you mentioned this on your sub stack, Shap Shots, in an article that you talked about Detroit as far as coming together to become a playoff contender. Yeah, and, and they're, like, Detroit's in a spot where Detroit is, it's been five years since, uh, sorry, five years since uh, Steve Eiserman's been there. It's been eight years since they've been in the playoffs. And they are in a team, they, they're they they're a team where they're kind of moving into that spot that Dallas has been in. One of the things the Stars have been able to do and good teams are able to do is you're able to uh, focus on, uh, I call them luxury purchases. Players and acquisitions that can come with red flags hockey wise and you take those risks um for the stars obviously we've loved how the matt duchene trade has worked out but matt duchene was a bit of a luxury purchase because if the matt duchene trade didn't work well the stars still were good enough to cover up for his shortcomings detroit hasn't been able to do that every move has had to be how do we build toward the future how do we build towards building um a culture all that stuff yada 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 this is the first kind of step of the so-called Iser plan where they're making a luxury purchase. And that's the next step when you can tell internally a team believes they're ready to uh, kind of contend. Okay. That, that, that makes sense. Uh, let's, I mean, since we're on and we came on to talk about the Patrick Kane situation, a couple other situations in the NHL that I wanted to talk to you about uh, quick talking about stars, Winnipeg tonight, uh, mm-hmm. kind of a, I don't want to say a big tilt, but good opportunity for stars to kind of get back in it. They're really good on the road this year. Uh, Goaltending has been announced. Connor Hellebeck on one side and Jake Ottinger on the other side. Uh, Should be a real nice tilt in Winnipeg. Yeah, the Jets are, uh, I mean, the Jets have full credit to former, uh, I mean, and I know he's missed part of the season, obviously, dealing with, um, and we still wish, uh, Rick Bonus and his family sure. and his wife uh, and his and his wife well from dealing with the stroke, um and he's been, so he hasn't been with the team the entire year but Rick Bonus 
has done a really good job kind of squeezing more out of that Jets team than ever should be squeezed out of it. Um, that, and, and that's kind of Rick Bonus's specialty. It may not be the prettiest hockey. It may not be the most fun brand of hockey to watch, but he is the he's he's a pretty good crisis coordinator. He's a pretty good guy of getting more out of teams um, than you ever should. And he's kind of got the Jets playing that way right now. Um, they are always they're always going to be good defensively. Um, but right now, if if if, if I had told you, Gavin. 20 games into the season. Which team scoring more goals? The Dallas Stars or the Winnipeg Jets? I don't think you would have taken the Jets. Would not have so, taken the Jets. You're correct. <laughs> so, uh, and that's without, and that's without Gabriel Velarde in the lineup. The, who you know, exactly. who you're for. Yeah. And, and, and I mean, you have, what is, what is the total right now? You've got, uh, in, I want to make sure I get the number right. Like you have Kyle Connor is just on a tear this season. He's Stars got 14 goals. Too. Yeah. 14 goals. Josh Morrissey has been kind of the consummate, like all around defenseman for that team. It's kind of running things. I mean, and like the other guy to watch, if I'm not sure how much people have paid attention to, um, how much people paid attention to, uh, his game and everything, but Colt Perfetti has been, has really taken some nice strides as a younger player with that team. I think he's got like 16 or 17 points now yeah. too. So they've, they've got, they got a, they, it's a, it's a good team there. And, uh, it's, uh, in the central, they have proven to have certain staying power that others haven't. It's been so. a long time, Sean, but every time they play Winnipeg, I do say, I wish Brendan Dillon was still here. <laughs> you know, I mean, I know he was, I believe the story, he was a restricted free agent and they couldn't, they tried to resign him and there was just kind of some bad blood. And therefore that's when he got traded to uh, San Jose. Is that uh, true? It was well, something like that, right? Or he held out? I mean, or... it, it, no, it was, I mean, he, he held out and then he re-signed. And it was more so, um, I mean, he was traded for Jason Demers. Yes. And it was kind of, it was, uh, it was kind of more of the stars trying to, at the time, if you look back at the time, it was 20, geez, was it 2014? I think it was when, when, when that, when, when that trade happened, 20, 2014, 2015, 2014, 15 season, I think. And it was the time when the stars had were had had way too many left-handed defensemen. They were trying to and getting Demers kind of and Demers and Dylan are kind of, were kind of similar players. And uh, it kind of was a move that evened up the defense a little bit yeah. uh, out, of, out of everything. So yeah. All right, and uh, two more quick things. And like I said, this is a quickie. And for those listening, we'll do a full recap of the Winnipeg game tomorrow morning. Uh, as Craig Ludwig uh, joins us. So uh, last night it was announced that Ryan Hartman received a uh, two-game suspension for a sleuth foot. And for those that don't know, because we always like to educate Spits and Suds, new listeners, how would you best describe a sleuth foot? It is essentially the act of tripping someone with your foot Um but kicking, it's basically kicking someone's feet out from under them. So the, the nature someone falls, um, um, the best way to like, actually the best comparison is it's almost like a, uh, it's almost like someone's, it's almost like you're tabletopping someone with your foot where like they're falling. And since they're yeah. falling back, you've tripped them and they're falling backwards. There's basically nothing, their arms, they can't put their arms back to catch themselves. And it's a very dangerous play. You could hit the, you hit, hit your, the back of your head against the ice, everything like that. So, um, yeah, I, I saw this play live. It was a bad play by yeah. Hartman. And then. And he uh, has a history too. He does. Yes. Yeah. And that's, that's too bad. Uh, I will add former Dallas star for one day, Ryan Hartman. Not a lot of people. A couple hours that. even, right? A couple <laughs> hours. He was off so, hunting when yeah. he heard the news. Yeah. <laughs> he yeah. didn't even he didn't even know. And next thing he knows, yeah. you know, he thought he was heading to Dallas and he's not headed to Dallas. Okay. The yeah. other one, because when that news came out, if you looked at NHL player safety, which is a great follow, because I, I think of the leagues, I think they do the best as far as being honest and coming out and saying this is exactly why we're suspending this person, including acknowledging that Ryan Hartman's a repeat offender, is that underneath in the comments section, when the suspension was announced, it was all about Jacob Truba. And on Saturday, Jacob Truba 
Um, I don't think it was intentional, however extremely dangerous. He was only fined $5,000 for high-sticking Boston's Trent Frederick, and I think high-sticking is a nice way to put it. Basically, that stick came up and very dangerously, luckily, hit him in the helmet. That was a very dangerous, and I think a lot of people, including myself, were surprised that the NHL just gave him a fine. Yeah, um, and why why can't I remember who it is? But who was the uh, um, what was the was the Derek Broussard interaction ways back where it was the the I'm trying to remember who that was. Um, I'll look it up. Yeah, uh, I'm trying to remember who it was, but it was basically there was a. A couple of years back, or not a couple of years back, a wise a ways back, there was a um, there was a long suspension for for swinging the stick and everything like that. But um, this, to me, the fact that this was not uh, the the fact that there was nothing, there wasn't even a suspension for it is crazy to me. That's the uh, that that's that's you look at that play and. That should have easily been that. Not only should have been a suspension, it should have been at least four games. Like, yeah, that is that's dangerous. <laughs> like, so yeah, and that and that's coming from Truber, who is a very rough player. I mean, I I don't want to say it sets a precedence, but I think the NHL had an opportunity to say, guys, stiff penalty here. Keep your stick down. We're not going to tolerate this. But yeah, yeah. It, it's I mean it's the thing. But the thing about NHL, the thing NHL player safety sometimes struggles with is. They do a good job of explaining decisions, as you said, but there's also there's too many times where what go what what gets what gets called and what gets what what gets reviewed and what doesn't. There, the line is sometimes hard to figure out what they're thinking on sometimes. So yes, and once again, to to recap, Patrick Kane going to Detroit. A lot of people wanted him here at the Stars. Sean put it best. We've talked about it on several Spits and Suds episodes. The Stars, as of right now, can't make moves unless they trade to free up cap space. They can't even call someone up from the AHL, as Sean has correctly pointed out, unless they say, you know, put uh, a Joel Hanley on waivers. And he which Which they they should, but that's that's the other, but that's... Right. It's slightly different too. Yeah. So. Yeah. And so you you've talked about that, and listeners have said, um, well, you know, we can find a trade partner. But my question, <laughs> Sean, I'm right. Like, just just say it so that there's two people saying it. No team wants a Mason yeah. Marchment. No team wants a Radic Fox. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. No exactly. Team exactly. Wants no, these no, guys. Those, that, that's not happening. So. Yeah. I mean, they're good players, but the reality is, why would a team take on a lot of salary? Or a player for multi years to help your team. It's just not going to happen yeah. unless you're throwing exactly. in top so, draft picks and yeah. everything like that. Yeah. Sean, thank you so much for uh, joining yeah. us once again. Check him out at EP Ringside. Sign up for his Substack, uh, Shap Shots. The name of the book is called We Win Here, and you can read him in D Magazine. You're a beast, my friend. Thank you, Gavin. And yeah. It's been fun, and everyone uh, enjoy the game tonight. Absolutely enjoy the game. Stars, Winnipeg, we'll talk about it tomorrow right here on Spits and Suns. <laughs>